Hey guys, this is Abhay Sharma for thinkingpenguin.com and today we are going to talk about the attribute output node in animation nodes. This video is actually a workaround uh, of uh, something I was working a few days ago. <clears throat> it was a title opening sequence and there were some um, bars, uh, multiple bars with um, different heights coming towards the camera and they all have bevels applied to it. Uh, but the problem was uh, because the bevel because I was using the scaling method I was scaling all the objects in the uh, z-axis and the bevels got messed because uh, you when you scale the object bevels get scaled so basically I'm getting stretched results um, depending on the uh, uh, size of the object so uh, let me show you this problem i have created this uh, this exact uh, triangle rod kind of thing and uh, let's hit the uh, smooth button to smooth the bevels looks uh, it should look uh, it looks nice now so uh, let's rename this to object or something now uh, let's go and create our object instancer node uh, select the object and uh, let's create uh, uh, some instances for that I'm going to use the distribute matrices node and I'm going to set this to grid and connect to instances it will basically by default create nine objects let's create a matrix output node connect to the object and connect to the matrices so you can see we have nine objects plus the uh, original objects let's hide this uh, click on the copy full object to see the bevel on all objects right now i can use uh, offset matrices tool to apply different scaling methods different uh, scaling on each object so let's do that uh, let's assign an offset matrix let's turn on the scale and i can use the z axis and then i can use the fall off to control the variation let's go and create a fall off a random fall off in this case i'm going to use the wiggle which will actually do the ex same thing but i have more controls actually so let's scale this up let's uh, change the amplitude a little bit something like this now you can see the problem uh, you can see the bevels got stretched depending on the y, the z scaling of the object and it's more visible in the wireframe so let's see one of the one of the biggest objects yes and you can see how much it got stretched and it this will definitely mess with your highlights and highlights are, highlights are very important you know i have asked this question to few of my friends who are using the cinema 4d i just wanted to know what they do to solve this problem but unfortunately they are doing the same thing uh, they maybe they don't know the the right way to do it um, so i have uh, animation nodes and i'm going to figure out here so one of the ways i figure out is to use the extrusion instead of scaling so but the uh, the problem with animation nodes uh, in with the uh, spline objects in animation nodes is that uh, to duplicate the duplicate the spline objects i have to use the uh, replicate spline tool which is the standard way of replicating spline objects but the problem is they uh, after doing the instancing basically they become a single object they are not multiple objects like when you use the instancer node it will generate multiple objects a replicate spline node generates a single curve so you can see that here so i have generated multiple uh, spline objects uh, and I can set this to film set the fill method to both to see the objects and you can see when I open the curve target 
you can see they are all single curve so if I use the extrude on this spline object all all objects will uh, get extruded and this is not what I want I want the extrusion to be applied on every single object differently so that's the problem and we are going to fix it in this tutorial so let's get started okay so let's get started um, first I will create my shape so I will create my triangle shape so uh, I can use the curve uh, spline I can use the curve but I'm going to use the mass circle and let's turn on the let's turn down the vertices to 3 to make it triangle then I'll go back then I go into the edit mode and uh, bevel it so press the control shift B uh, shortcut key and you can use the scroll mouse uh, you can use the scroll button to insert uh, segments something like this I want four and now I'm going to convert this mesh. right now this is a mesh object I want to convert this into a spline object so to do that you can press the alt C shortcut key and choose curve from mesh or text so now if I go into edit mode you can see they are uh, this this is converted into a curve object okay so and let's go into the properties and turn on uh, create it uh, convert this into a 2d object and set the fill met method to both if it is not set to both all right now uh, we are not going to use the replicate spline tool uh, we are going to use the our regular instancer node instead so select the uh, circle I'm going to rename this to triangle triangle and le let's uh, create the uh, matrix distribute node to generate uh, points in 3d space uh, so I'm just going to connect this to instances it will figure out how many instances have to be created based on the um, points generated by uh, distribute matrix matrices and so now we have a uh, few objects and we have to go through each object to apply the extrude so I'm going to use the uh, the old method you know the loops so let's create a object matrix uh, transform output okay i'm going to connect object to object and let's uh, so for uh, uh, location i'm going to use uh, random locations so do we need i can import that but do we need that uh, i don't know maybe so just i'm going to, i'm just going to use instances and let's set this to 20 something like this and let's use a vector random vector to connect the seed to index and let's apply the vector to location now we'll have a uh, different points in 3d space random points in 3d space and so this is our location now we want extrude uh, extrusion applied on different objects for that we can use the uh, attribute output node so in this node there is there are three things first is the the actual name of the property that you're going to refer and then you have to use you have to tell which object you want to uh, modify that property and then you have to give a value so object I'm going to connect it with this uh, for the attribute I'm going to use the extrusion so I can uh, right click here on the extrude whatever property you want to uh, manipulate through animation nodes so you just right click on that and choose copy path copy data path right and then can then you can paste it here 
something like this but sometimes it does not work depending on the attribute so in this case if this does not work type data dot extrude and this will work but it says value has a wrong type value is this this uh, color is basically a generic value and it can accept anything but what we want is a float value because extrude extrude is actually a float so let's go into numbers and create a float connect that and uh, now we can use this right and let's increase the scale they are overlapping let's change let's uh, change the pattern so let's see something like this this looks good i don't know i have to figure out that these objects do not overlap maybe there is a good way better way all right now what so uh, we can use a random vector random number here to generate uh, to apply different extrusion on each object so instead of using a float input i'm going to use a random number let's connect the index to seed and let's connect the number to value and now you can create something like this so this is not working because we have to turn on the deep copy so i'm going to turn on the deep copy now use the uh, random number now we can let's increase the no, not that much so just to 200 or something now we have different uh, ooh, let's scale it up and i'm going to turn off the uh, relationship lines so something like this and let's uh, apply so i'm going to select the original object triangle and let's give a depth oh we are not using the depth sorry excuse me so we have to use this uh, method so what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this node attribute output node and I'm going to copy the uh, data path of depth so right click and choose copy data path and I'm going to just uh, paste it here something like this connect the object and value we need uh, we can use another float value so let's create a float node and let's apply this now we can use this to generate the bevel so something like this and uh, for result well, I'm going to create one more for resolution so shift D to duplicate connect the object and for resolution copy data path paste it here uh, resolution is not float it's a integer so let's create a integer and let's give some resolution to it so <clears throat> let's turn on the wireframe mm, something like this let's see this one and let's decide how many segments you want to insert four is more than enough so let's leave it there now I'm going to uh, select the smoothing uh, select the uh, shading method to smooth so I'm going to select the original object and set this to smooth and it should apply so turn on the copy full object and it will apply on all objects so the 
benefit of this technique is that no matter how big or small your object is your bevels look exactly same it does not affect it by the length of the bar so so let's switch this to cycles blender let's have some fun you know um, I'm going to select the camera here is the camera and I'm going to set the focal length to 15 millimeter and switch to camera open the end panel and log camera to view and it was actually something like this uh, create more randomness so you can see this is actually the result I wanted and for that I'm using the object attribute output you have to know the the data path uh, the, the, the actual name of the data to use it and the easiest way is just right click on any value and just use the copy data path to manipulate anything all right so this is the simple setup and i hope you like this tutorial so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time bye bye